All right, welcome. I'm Emil. I'm one of the founders and the CEO of Tomorrow Biostasis, a cryopreservation or biostasis company based here in Berlin, in Germany. And once in a while we get questions on our social media or somewhere else and I usually like to take some time to answer them and make them available to, well, all of you. Um, so here goes. So the first question is from Boris. Um, this is an interesting opportunity. Our life is too short. Can someone decide for themselves when they want to get brought back to life? So this is a very important question. So of course you want to be only brought back to life once medically it is, is it secure and, 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 and safe, right? But then again, also it doesn't make sense to be brought back to life, you know, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years in the future when the world might have already changed so much that it, the, the world is very difficult for someone from the 21st century to, to understand, right? So there, there's some of this sweet spot of not too early and not too late in quotation marks. On the other hand, it's very difficult to predict at what time frame and in what time in the future it will be possible, medically speaking, to bring someone back to life. So we have decided that the most prudent way to go forward is to allow our customers, our members, to give, give wishes, to basically tell us, hey, I would prefer X, Y, Z. But we would not legally, or we are not legally bound, or the foundation more precisely that maintains cryopreservation is not legally bound to follow these wishes. And the logic is not because we don't want to, but because we think it's the, it's the best way for everybody. And the reason for that is the following, right? Let's say someone tells us, I want to be brought back in the year 2100. And let's say at that point, arguably you can already bring people back, but it only works in, you know, in, in, in 5% of the cases. Would someone then really be, want to be brought back with the chance that it doesn't work in 95% of the cases? Or the other way around, let's say someone says, hey, I want to be brought back in the, in the year 2300, right? Let's say it starts working at the, at, the, at the year 2100 already, right? And you can do it and it's, it's absolutely safe and so on. Would you then want to wait for 200 years? And you know, the world in the future, arguably, the longer you wait becomes less and less understandable to someone from the 21st century. So in the end, I think the best way how to do it is give people the choice to, to decide would they rather be a bit earlier or would they rather be a bit later. And when I say a bit earlier or a bit later, what I mean by that is would you rather take as much risk as you would currently do in, an, in, a, in a major operation or would you rather take so much risk, which would be then the less risk, would you take so much risk as in an elective operation. So the second question is from Simon. Tomorrow biostasis, but doesn't this make sense only if someone dies young? If I die old and weak, there's no point in coming back in this condition, in that condition. Well, first of all, of course, it only makes sense to live on if, you, if you're healthy and you know, physically and mentally fit, right? But in the future, it is very likely possible, and you see the first signs of that already today, it's very likely possible that even though you might have been old when you've been cryopreserved, that a certain amount and even potentially a very large amount of rejuvenation, both from a physical standpoint and from a mental standpoint as well, will be possible in the future, right? So you can already imagine or you can already see right now that um, you know 3D printed organs are pretty close, right? So a part of your body, parts, of parts would of course be potentially easily replaceable in the future. And then secondarily, of course, the mental point is the potentially more important and more complex topic. But even there, um, with, with certain, certain interventions that, you, that are really relatively close right now, for example, getting rid of misfolded proteins, getting rid of uh, cellular waste, of waste products between cells and so on, all of which is not really, really super far away. It's significantly closer by or significantly more advanced than actually bringing someone back from cryopreservation itself. The next question is from Alexander. In the event that one dies the bad way 
and the cryo preservation of cryonics team is booted out of out by non-friendly cryonics medical staff. So if the medical staff doesn't like this topic in hospitals, how practically meaningful is it to sign up at tomorrow's biostasis at all in Central Europe? So in the past, there have been cases where hospital or doctoral staff has not been super supportive with cryopreservation for cryopreservation. But if you have signed up for cryopreservation, the contracts that you sign with us, we are the organization that is legally tasks, tasked with taking care of the body after the patient has died. So even if the hospital is you know, absolutely opposed to that, and of course we do everything to not have that happen, right? We, we bring doctors, I'm there, and so on. So we make sure that there is no, you know, no tension between us and, and the hospital staff or the doctors. But should it happen, in any case, we are the organization that is allowed and is supposed and is responsible to take care of the body after legal death, right? So at that point, the hospital can, you know, they can try to put some barriers up, but in, in the end, um, at least historically, in almost every case that I'm aware of, there was not a problem. By the way, if I don't answer any question comprehensively enough, then feel free to just, you know, send us a message and then we'll add it on in the next round again um, and, you know, give more detail. The next question would be from uh, Zundar. Has anybody ever been put on ice and been revived again? So no one has been brought back, no human has been brought back yet from cryopreservation. Of course, being put on ice and cooled down a bit, that is actually a standard procedure that is being done in a lot of, I mean, not being put on ice, but cooled down significantly, significantly lower than normal temperature. This is being done in a lot of operations. So this is a relatively standard process. And of course, people have been brought back from that. But cryopreservation, of course, the temperatures are significantly, significantly lower. So. No, from now, no one has been brought back from cryopreservation, from cryogenic temperatures. And in fact, no large animal has been brought back from cryopreservation. And the reason for that is that currently medicine is not advanced enough to make that happen. Not because there's very something very fundamentally that is never going to be possible, just there's a lot of devil in the details problems that just make it not possible right now. But of course, all of that is being worked on, um, including by us. So in the future, even though it might take a few decades and even potentially a bit more than that, um, it's very possible, very much believable and very much, I don't know how likely, but it, it, there's a good chance that this will be possible in the future. The next question is from Mike. Um, who has the motivation to get back, to get me back in the future? What if the energy bill for the cooling is not paid anymore? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So, I think there, there are two answers to the first part. Um, who has a motivation to bring someone back? So first of all, we don't re really rely on anybody else having the motivation in the first place, right? So the organization who manages the, the patients in cryopreservation, of course, has a motivation to, to do it, because, um, well, that is why it was founded. And not only that, um, so, so for me, it's, it's highly important personally that we build the organization in a way that it has, it, it keeps the alignment with the mission so, so that it is interested to bring someone back. And why is that important for me? Um, apart from the fact that I think it's the right thing to do, um, I will be cryopreserved as well, right? So it's, it's my, it's not actually my plan, but if, if medicine doesn't progress much faster and, and we will not be able to get, actually get longevity and life extension medication and treatments, then I think it's the highest probability that I will be cryopreserved as well. At least I would want to be cryopreserved should I die. And so I have a high intrinsic motivation as well that the structure and everything is, is set up in a way so that it actually has an interest to being, bring people back when I'm and everybody else is now involved in the organization is not around anymore. The second part is that Society, if you look over large stretches of time, right, hundreds of years, societies have always, over long periods, there, there are some hiccups, but by and large, over long periods of time, the society has always gotten more, more social, more interested in making sure that the wishes of an individual are being followed. So there's a good probability that in the future, societies would feel some moral obligation to bring people back. 
The second part of the question is, what if, um, what if the energy bill for the cooling is not paid anymore? So luckily there is no real energy bill, so you know, energy going out is not really the problem, but of course you need to refill liquid nitrogen. So the, all the organizations are set up in a way so that there's always enough money to, bring, to, to pay for, for you know, maintenance cost. And that is done in the, in the following way. So when someone is cryopreserved, and this is also why this is so expensive, unfortunately, a large part of that money, around 60% for, for Switzerland, that's around 120,000 euros, is being put aside in a, in a foundation. And now that money is being invested and only the interest, only the return of that money is being used to pay for maintenance cost. So the principal amount of money, the 120,000 euros, actually stays always the same, inflation adjusted actually, to make sure that you can always maintain cryopreservation and all the other costs, um, all the ongoing costs out of the interest and return of that money. All right, since we are running out of time, um, we have a, another round of questions that we will do in the next video, in the next round. So until now, or until then, if anybody is interested in this topic, please reach out to us. We're more than happy to answer your questions in, in person as well. Um, or in a video chat, um, and should you be able, or should you be interested in signing up or learning more, go to biostasis. Sorry, <laughs> tomorrowbiostasis.com, and check out what we have as information about biostasis. Thanks a lot, and until next time.